Just a little boy Wrapped inside a beard You sang with such a gentle voice It was kind of weird Came in on your one trick pony, filled with pretense. You're such a phony. Don't know how you feed that ego. Please don't come back. I want you to go and find a mirror and take a long look. She is such an angel How do you keep her here? Locked up in your shackles Your misogynist, oh dear Rather thinking that you're such a hero We both know you're just a zero When it comes to virtue you get buried By your arrogance you're not even married You don't speak for her She's not a piece of me Do you think that you are To speak to me that way Tried it you down here So that we could both play You acted nice, you acted friendly Until I showed you true integrity Then you got uncomfortable Then you threatened me You threatened me again With that fake grin You threatened me again
rides his one-trick pony
Hey, this is BK with BK and Understanding, and you're watching The Traveling Mike. Oh, gosh. Uh, when I was a teenager, I started... Actually, before, it started when I was a preteen. I grew up liking music, but it, as a kid, you know, it was just whatever my parents listened to, so that would have been like George Strait and country music. And then a little bit of pop music uh, that I would get mostly through like MTV and stuff. Um, so that, but then in junior high, I got started getting into music, um, sixth grade, you know, uh, I'd listened to some R and B stuff because that was new. And a lot of the girls I liked at the time were listening to like, uh, well, some R and B stuff. So listen to that for a while. But then, uh, someone introduced me to Green Day Dookie and that's what turned me on to rock music. So, uh, yeah, that, that turned me on to there. And, uh, I got my first guitar shortly after that from my grandfather. My grandfather used to play here at City Limits and around bars uh, around town, supposedly. His name was Bob Gazaway, and uh, he used to play for free free beer, from what I'm told. So I guess he's the one who gave me my first guitar, and that's kind of what stuck, uh, took me down there. I wasn't real dedicated to practicing, though, when I first started. I would just learn parts of songs, and uh, but I'm pretty much self-taught. I've had a couple of times I took lessons for short periods, but... Mostly learned from playing with other people. Oh, the year of the one I adore. Okay, so I used to actually be a musician at a church, and that the the original version of that song has different, uh, slightly different lyrics, um, and it, so it says, "Lord, I want you more and more." So I used to sing that at church, but I love that song so much. When I started BK and Understanding, I was like. I don't want to scrap that song because BK and Understanding is not a worship band. You know, it's not Christian music. It's just music, uh, especially the next album. We're going to get into rock music. That's what we want to do is rock music, all different types of that. So, but I wanted that song to carry on because it was so good. So I just translated it to focus on, you know, those uh, just really dear relationships, you, you know, romantic relationships. But when you fall in love with someone, because that's got s spiritual symbolism to it anyway. And so I, I just translated it so I could play anywhere at a bar, not just churches. Oh, that's that's close. I'm pretty excited. But I only, I had a moment of anxiety like the uh, two weeks ago because I have finished everything that I can possibly do. All the drum tracks are done. No, they should be done now. There was one more Tim Paul Rugg was doing for me. But that should be done now. But all we're let, we're waiting on is uh, my guitar player. I have to meet with him, and he's so busy right now with uh, his job that it's usually once a week. So we're we're wrapping up his parts, and then all that will be left will be mixing and mastering. And I've gotten my premixes as perfect as I could, so the mixing won't take long. But really, just needs mastering after that. And then as soon as it's done mastered, that's when I'll set a publishing date and announce it. But it's called Basal Keystones. And so I'm pretty excited about it. The first one, Beginning Kernels, I'll go ahead and mention that. Those were acoustic uh, songs, and th the two I played tonight are on there, uh, that came about as I was working on Basal Keystones. And uh, so I went ahead and released that, but th those are really just acoustic demos. And You're the One I Adore and I and the Terrible turned out the best, so I've promoted those songs the most. here in town. Oh gosh, well definitely Slim Pickens Outfitters. Um, please check that out. And you know, one of my best friends owns that. And uh, he's, before the pandemic, uh, he had me come and uh, I would organize sessions once a month for it. And I think he's gonna, he's gonna wanna start that back up. We may not do it monthly right off the bat. Uh, in fact, April, we might start it back up. But uh, yeah, go check out Slim Pickens Outfitters. Really cool store. Even if uh, you're just checking out, he'll hang out with you, he'll talk your head off. You might have to like forcibly end the conversation. He's a really friendly guy. Yeah. Okay, I'm the Terrible uh, was based unfortunately on a true story. Um, and it's the worst encounter I've had when booking another musician to play at one of uh, the sessions that I used to host. And uh, he was real friendly at first and I 
invited him to come play because I had met his girlfriend. A sorority had asked me to come play worship music for them a few years before. So I met him through her. And then at the show, me being friendly, talking to her, apparently upset him and made him jealous. And just he kind of showed his true colors, just being a controlling, manipulative person. And uh, that ended up being the second time he blew up on me. Actually, the first time he blew up on me because he said, I got a guy who can make flyers. And he did, but he didn't put my name on it. He just put his name on it. And I, so I mentioned something. I said, hey, man, usually for these shows, you know, we have all the bands playing on the flyers. And he, that made him angry. And he blew up on me then. And then the second time was him, me talking to his girlfriend. He thought I was hitting on her and accused me of all sorts of stuff. So Ivan the Terrible is inspired, sadly, on a true story about someone being a terrible person. And sadly, uh, as far as I know, the young lady still doesn't realize that she's being manipulated and stuff. So that's kind of how it goes with those types of people.